It's Jim Prevost. Daryl Crawford. We're with Embrace the Shake tonight. We're going to talk about several things. We're going to first play a little beach music because summertime has definitely left us. That is true. So how are you doing with this uh, this uh, crisp weather? Uh, I think I'm going to be a weatherman when I grow up. Why is that? Because if I'm right 25% of the time, I'm at the top of my field. <laughs> Are you going to use the farmer's almanac, or are you going to use all that technology that flies around and gives uh, us wrong forecast? I can tell the weather, weather better just by the way I feel. You know how I tell the weather? I go outside. If it's raining, I get an umbrella. If it's not raining, I don't get one. If it's cold, you get a coat. That's right. Can't slip nothing by you today. You're on top of your game. Huh? I had my neck traction today, and I'm up and going. <laughs> As you can tell, uh, Daryl uh, is taller tonight by what, half an inch, maybe two? Maybe two. Maybe two. Went by physical therapy today. Tell us about your visit, if you don't mind sharing. Well, I do physical therapy once a week over at um, Carolina's, Carolina's Rehab Mount Holly. And uh, Sarah and uh, Petra over there, they um, take good care of me. And one of the things they do is give me net traction at the end of my appointment and straighten my posture out. And if you'd seen me yesterday at boxing class, I was all bent over. Yeah, he was so bent over. I've got I've got the evidence about him at boxing class. And that's Daryl and his son, Sam, correct? Sam. Right. He goes to Western Carolina and he's holding the bag. And as you can see, uh, Daryl is crushing it. So talk to you about, about your adventures as being a Golden Glove champion Parkinson boxer. Tell us about that. Well, we started with you about six weeks ago on a boxing class, maybe more than that even. Um, time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> and um, it's it's not only good exercise, it's, it's a lot of fun. The people there are just wonderful. And then um, – you get to take out a little bit of aggression on the bags, which helps because when you're in, in Parkinson's mode and you're shaking, you can really hit pretty good. Exit 91's on tonight. Big Bob from New Jersey. Hey, Bob. And uh, got several other folks, Tara Jackson and Sarah Green are good friends of mine. Bobby Tessner, I've known him a long time. Been around a long time. You've been around a long time? Been around a long time. Been around a long time. You look pretty good. Wait, thank you. So do you. Now, um, tell us how you were feeling yesterday and, and what you saw in, in our parks and boxes class for what was the common theme yesterday among uh, what the weather had done to us. Uh, with Parkinson's, you have good days and bad days. And sometimes good, good days get outweighed by the bad days. And when the weather, I, I had pretty had pretty good couple of days going on there, and then the weather changed to pretty chilly, and I just lost all my leg motion, my uh, hands were tremoring, and um, in fact, you had to hold me up. The picture you showed, what it didn't show was you were standing behind me holding me up. Yeah, and then Daryl had to take a turn yesterday because my feet got locked up a little bit. And so I, just, I said, remember when I said, you mind holding me up? Yeah. <laughs> so we have to hold each other up. Uh, you mind sharing your hands tonight? Uh, okay. They were a lot worse yesterday. Yeah, they are much uh, better today. Embracing the shake today. Yeah, you're embracing it? Yeah. You got the corner marking on it today, don't you? And that's the other thing. Go ahead. Let me get that camera up. Go ahead. Tell them the secret we found out yesterday. We were. I think you better tell it. Okay. All right. So yesterday, um, Daryl was having a tough time with his arms. He had a lot of tremor, and it was um, it was a little bit of an asymmetrical tremor, meaning that one side was more than the other as far as the tremor. And then when I looked at his arms, I went into athletic trainer mode, right? Because you had your boxing gloves off. So 
therefore you're inside my practice act, you know, an, an athlete and everything, Correct. recreational athlete. And what I noticed is that, and I'm going to illustrate this, Daryl's arms were, were in this position where one was higher than the other, and the one that was shorter, which was the left side, right, was, was a little bit more contracted. Was that, is that right, my telling you? Right. right. Okay. And it, so there's there's some things in athletic training and physical therapy called summation of contractions, and that's when muscles uh, go into a spasm or a contraction. They keep contracting, 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 getting smaller and smaller and smaller until they get into a posture or a position where they're comfortable. Uh, and what happens is the muscle on the other side of the, like his arm was short like this, so his biceps really working hard. This muscle was trying to go into its own contraction to straighten out, so he had this argument going on and see the tremor mechanism, all right? Now, that tremor mechanism that Daryl has is pretty pronounced today and that I have at times and in and, and our other, client, uh, other, other fellow athletes as well is all determined because of things called neurotransmitters and neuroreceptors. The message has to be the same. What send has to be received? Well, Daryl's arm was receiving one and transmitting another. It was doing opposite things, which is supposed to do with the necessary chemical we have, Mr. Dopamine, right? Right. He was really absent. So there's a theory that we use in feedback. It's called feed forward, feed back. And feed forward is his muscles know what to do but they weren't getting getting the feedback to do it the right way. Correct. Okay. So we had to play around with the mechanism of feed forward and feed back. So what we did is we took some time and we isolated his arm and started doing stretching movements, which isolated his muscles and worked in the feed forward mode. So as you can see, the tremor, and then, as you can see, when the tremor comes back across, when he's contracted, his muscle, his bicep is tight. This tremor is worse, but as we stretch the tremor, it comes out of his hand pretty good bit. Now, I appreciate you allowing our, our fans to see this. Sure. Okay. It was amazing because I, I couldn't move my arm he hit the bag and then when he after he got through doing it i was able to punch the bag and i had to have my son to hold it because i hit it so hard yeah started driving that bag didn't you yeah now as you can see he's getting a little bit worse and that's okay because what his brain is sending the message from the neurotransmitter and what the muscles in the neuroreceptors okay there's an argument going on. So we'll just keep working this during the course of therapy until we almost stop it. There it goes right there. What's that old saying? And you heard it first and saw it first on roller derby. There you go. Right there. So we're going to sit, we're going to start the tremor and we're going to end it. Yeah, that's pretty good, Daryl. About another five minutes of this and we'd be good, wouldn't we? Yeah. Okay. Is that you shaking or me? I think it's you. Okay. Always blaming other people. Now, let's let's also talk about this for a minute. If this arm, if his other arm, okay, is shaking, if we work this one. And I don't have enough hands. As you can see, this one's getting worse for a minute. And then this one will calm down as well. It's called the reciprocating effect. There it goes. Now the thumb's moving a lot, but we'll take that, but look at the rest of his finger. I'm gonna isolate his thumb. Watch me, isolate thumb, trimmer stops. All because we're working this side. Nobody's clapping for us. I guess we can't hear them, can we? I guess not. All right. Hey, Jim Sherman, hope you're doing well, Troop. Now now that we've aggravated Daryl a little bit, his arms are going to uh, tremor up. 
and then they'll eventually tremor down, and that's all right. Um, and if he doesn't tremor up, then we've interfered with it. This one's looking pretty good. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. It was shaking really. I need a milkshake. I'll just come over. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So what we provided was feed forward, and then we started when he was moving his arm back and forth like this, we started getting feedback. Hey, we're getting some class. All right. Yeah. All right. So that's what we were doing yesterday. And before I leave tonight, I'm going to work on his other arm. But that's just using a little bit of athletic training knowledge to help Daryl out and anybody else in our group that, that wants to do it. Um, and that's why we, stretching is so good for us. If you elongate the tissue on one side, then the reciprocating muscle on the other side of the arm works. So I, I know I'm getting clinical, but for example, if I move my arm like this, this muscle is short. This one has to elongate. And this muscle and this muscle have to work together. There's two heads in this muscle, bicep. It set means head and uh, by means two, and then there's three here in the tricep, and they have to have a balance, a ratio. When that ratio gets off, they tremor. And that's what a cramp is, and that's what a uh, restless leg is. Restless leg is usually a B12 deficiency. But my point being is if we can just get him stretched out, then he does so much better. And that's why you'll see uh, folks with Parkinson's a lot of times, they're stretching their hands or they're moving or they're grasping. One, because of the pain, but two, they're trying to just somehow, some way, um, get rid of the tremors a little bit. Well, the boxing bit. moves, the boxing exercises, they're moving muscles that don't get moved in other therapy. So the two therapies complement each other. Actually, the three, if you take, the physical therapy I'm getting, the chiropractor and the boxing, uh, I feel like I'm getting a whole body workout. And um, that's keeping me, I mean, I'm, I'm in stage four out of five, and this gives me hope and keeps me going. Learned physically. A little, learned a little cane food last night? Yeah, we learned a little cane food last night. <laughs> got a... Got... We picked our canes and whacked the bag a little bit, but it would hurt if it was a real person, so... We're going to probably have to get you a belt with some stripes on it and get your own cane mat out of a, out of a wooden dowel. Yeah. Really good for you. The thing that we, we call it cane foo, it's actually collie stick fighting. But the, the thing is that um, the disabled population is often more attacked than the able bodied. Would you agree with that, Daryl? Uh, I would say that would be true. So, as we work on our boxing skills for fitness, there is carryover to self protection. Um, at least if we're with somebody and somebody were to try to rob us or something, I mean, we got nothing to lose, right? So we just go ahead and go to the fight, and grab and hold, and we can we can short strike and we stop punch. We can hit with our heads, bite if we have to. But if we have a stick, like Daryl has a cane, he knows how. He's just learned how to strike with it and poke with it to keep um, somebody away from him or at bay. So those are the things that we do in our boxing program that's a little bit different than some of the other boxing programs. We also try to make it practical as well. And it'll move on into activities of daily living and some other fine motor skills, but we got the, the big motors to work first. Yeah, do you agree? I agree. We got to do it in reverse because we, we have to do things in reverse. Um, last night we talked about the weather a good bit because a couple of us were coming in shuffling a little bit more than we normally do. And, and one of our friends uh, had already had so it's seven pills, I believe, seven of her pills. Yeah. And she was just not doing well at all, especially in the hands and the thumbs. I don't, even know, I, I don't know enough about it yet why it 
works the, the tremors in our thumbs. I think it's because it's one of the long nerves coming out of the base of the brain, but I'll look it up and find something out about it. But we all had issues with shuffling and some tremors last night and some freezing. How did you do your freezing last night? That was really amazing. I was walking pretty good on uh, Tuesday and then Wednesday when the weather changed. The My feet were freezing not from being cold, but from locking to the ground like like, it was, like I was walking in quicksand. And um, I, that was part of the reason why you had to hold me up. But by the time I got out of there, I was walking pretty good. So I think just the activity with the legs, the, I, could, I had to move my feet in the blade position, which you were showing us. And I showed, I had to move my feet and get some action going in there. And I'm real, I was really pleased by the time I got out of there. Yeah, I think, don't you agree? I mean, really picked up a lot with his feet. Uh, you know, our body temperature is 98.6, and we don't do well with temperature change at all. And one of the first things that affects is our thermoregulatory system, our inner body's ability to sweat and accept cold and uh, accept heat. And like it was really hot outside, everybody around us sweats, but we don't sweat and have the same sweat rate. Everybody has an individual sweat rate, but there's parameters. The bad thing about us is we don't get to evaporate or radiate heat out of us so it becomes trapped. And that's why we have issues with heat stroke. Boy, imagine heat stroke with Parkinson's. Hmm. And the thing, and you don't recover from that either. I mean, you survive it, but you are so hypersensitive to temperature after that because of your thermoregulatory system is really out of whack. Another thing is, on the uh, conversely, um, now we're in, well, it's typical in North Carolina, you know, you have July on 10 months, and then you have winter. And um, we don't accommodate, I think it's been tougher for me this year. Would you agree, Marianne, with the cold weather? Mm -hmm. it's, it's been it's, uh, been tougher. Uh, wearing a jacket all the time in the house and stuff, mm -hmm. but um, we don't accommodate the cold very well. In fact, cold is more difficult for us because we don't have the ability to warm vice versa where we have the ability to cool down. You know what we've got to do? Huh? We forgot to tell them we have an audience. Oh, yeah, we have an audience. Same two people last time. Yeah. But we have security this but time. they came back, too. Yeah. They did come back. Our wives are here tonight. Um, they're not as loud as they were last time. I think because you told them to be quiet. They have to calm them down. Yeah. They were rowdy. That's why we were a minute late. Um, you know, that looks like a clock that you have in your house. A Beatles clock. It does. Yeah, a picture it? just like that, too. Yeah, yeah, a picture like that. Yeah, we might be at your house tonight. What do you think? I don't know. Hard, we're kind of hard to find. Yeah. Boy, you go down the end of their street and also house. <laughs> and um, I don't mind. I'm sorry I drove through the bushes. I'll be all right. I'll, I'll send my landscaper. House and water. <laughs> house and water. Okay. I started getting ready to blow bubbles to find my way out of the water. I want to talk a little bit about the weather now. You know, we know we've had a little bit of a change, but uh, I looked some stuff up on the internet, and I did stay away from Wikipedia, you know, the most reliable source that there is in America. And the uh, first thing I want to talk about seasonal differences on non-motor stuff. And um, like I said, during the summer months, we can stay warm. I mean, we, we, we get warm, but we can't cool down and then vice versa now. Yeah. And we have the hardest time uh, with cold weather. And like I said, it's the thermoregulatory system. The sad thing about it is the only way that we can stay warm is we can't take in anything internally. You know, liquids do all right for just a very short time, but it's all about bundling. So we have to bundle. So we have to wear two and three of everything. Uh, one thing the article recommended was to go back to your physician and have blood work done. Uh, and I didn't put that in, but having the blood work done to see if you have any metabolism changes uh, during the seasons of the year. What do you think about that? I think uh, anecdotally, I feel it. I, 
think it's a good thing to do. Do you have any, um, do you feel more flu susceptible during the cold year? Do you have more fatigue issues? Actually, um, I have more fatigue issues, but I don't get as sick as much as I used to. Uh-huh. I don't know if it's all the medicines I take or what, but, and also I'm limited to who I come in contact with. Right. And I'm not out in places where germs are being spread. So um, for the last, at least for the last three years, I've been a lot more healthy when it comes to not getting sick. So my doctor likes it and I like it too. So let me ask our audience, we have an audience question. Have y'all noticed that that as since we've both been diagnosed that we've kind of changed our habits as far as going out and not being antisocial, just being more careful about what we do. Talk a little louder so they can so you, you you both agree? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, I think that was one reason I decided I had to leave the school system. And that, well, you know, I left the school system, but I'm in a college atmosphere. I'm in a health building. It has all the special stuff for filters and screens in our air conditioning system because you know we're around so much stuff. Yeah. But um, I'm a lot healthier since I've been at Limestone. I know that. Well, I think because I'm interacting, using my brain more instead of my mouth. Um, you don't I'm, have much to work with there, do you? <laughs> you got me, man. I deserve that. <laughs> I so deserve that. <laughs> um, you're mostly motor, right? I'm mostly motor. You're mostly motor, and I'm a PIGD. Um, which is, you know, Parkinsonian uh, initiated gait disorder. And you're more, are you more, your general overall motor? Uh, no, I'm, I'm about half the non motors I have. Okay. So can you go over some of your non motors? Because that kind of leads into some stuff I found as well. Tell us about your non motors. Um, well, depression, anxiety, obviously. Um, I had some issues with uh, blood pressure. Um, my handwriting is small. And I can't see anything I write anymore. And um, I can't smell. I'm losing my taste buds. Can't taste that much anymore. So, and, and I, as we talked in the last, last time I was on, um, I had the double vision. And um, so I'm about half and half. The, the motor skills are what are the most debilitating to me. But I do have the other ones that are irritating. And also when my eyes run, my nose runs, and even though I have dry eyes, my eyes tear all the time. And um, Bess says I'm just getting emotional, but at the drop of a hat, I'll, I'll start crying. And um, and we have the voluntary and the involuntary crying, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, as stress level goes up, you tear, your eyes just tear. They just tear up and they start, no start running. And my nose will start running. And, and Well, that's a lot of running. So and then nice. drooling. I got restless legs. So, and the thing about it with that is when you treat when you treat one of these symptoms, it has an effect on the other. And one of the things that I got some medicine to dry me up for my nose running and my eyes watering and drooling and stuff, I got some medicine to dry me up. Well, then it attacked my kidneys and my liver. So I had to back off on that. So you had to give one for the other. And the medication that I was taking one time for put me in the hospital twice for septicemic constipation. Got a little hairy down there in New Mexico, didn't it? 
<laughs> Seriously, I thought they were going to take me to the operating room because I was so septic. And it was all because of the constipation yeah. and from the medication. So they treat you for one thing and the other, you know. Um, and as you can see, the difference with both of us, our Parkinson's syndromes are different. I'm a two. Um, just starting to move into the two. Um, but I have a lot of non-motor as well. I don't taste a whole lot. But what I do taste, tastes kind of grainy. Yeah. There's, I, can, I don't taste spices. Spices. I just make that word up. You knew what I was saying. I got you. Okay. Spices. I can taste spice. I, I know it's spicy, but I couldn't tell you what, what it is. You know, I'm a Pop-Tart fanatic. And now I can't tell what blueberry frosted from my strawberry frosted. Well, who eats spicy pop tarts? That's a good point. <laughs> That's twice I've been spoke. I'm just going to be quiet and call it Daryl's Comedy Hour. Here's one thing I learned from the research, Daryl. This is this is uh, this is uh, our symptoms during the summer um, during the summer months have a tendency to take a dive as far as our non-motor stuff, because our bodies are more active, we're warmer, we're, we're sweating, um, sweat rates are up if, if we do sweat. Um, we eat a little bit differently too, the, the, we take in a little bit more iron during the summer because of our salads mm-hmm. and stuff, and that really helps us out. And then um, we eat more comfort food in the winter, and we don't get a whole lot of those irons that we need, and the eat, like calcium, potassium, all the, you know, uh, EMs, as I call them, and we eat more macro than micro. And that's getting into too much medicine. But during the winter, um, if you can just stay on the Mediterranean diet or a resemblance of it and increase your protein, the research showed that, that we could actually stay a little bit warmer because we're digesting at a better rate. And when you digest your food, your metabolism increases. Um, the other thing is, when was the last time you had your medication adjusted? Um, probably about a year ago. About a year ago? Yeah. And you go to a movement specialist, is that correct? I go to a neurologist who specializes in Parkinson's, and I go to a movement specialist as well. Uh-huh. That, both of them. And they coordinate my with my primary. So that three, the three of them coordinate. Do you, you bundle up more during the winter months or the cooler months? I run hot most of the oh, time. So you run hot. I run hot. So I'm... Throw that out. <laughs> well, you know, check this out. Run hot, man. <laughs> Becky's late. Must be the hey, Becky. Must have been. So he runs hot. Do you ever overheat? Yes, you I do. Spew out of your ears or anything like that? Like yeah, yeah, if it's orifice, it's got something coming out of it. <laughs> well, it's true. You said don't hold back. <laughs> you see why I interview <laughs> I tell you what, I'm a better man because I met you, man. I tell you what, you're just so, just, just, dang, just a motivator, man. Why were you late, Becky? <laughs> yeah, I bet she's out gambling. I don't know. She said, ask me why. Why were you late, Becky? She can't, why did I yell? She can't hear us. <laughs> <laughs> this is a long ways over there. Now, I bet if I mumbled, she'd understand. Yeah, that's true, too. Yeah, I mumble a lot more, too. Do you? Yeah. That's from hanging around with me and Becky. That might be it. I took two pills by accident before I came over today. So I'm like, I forgot I took the first one. <laughs> now I know it because I can't sit still. A little tardive dyskinesia going here. Um, so here's what they tell us about keeping warm. Raise the temperature in your house, too. My philosophy is, are they going to pay the bill? Number two, where, I can't see wearing a hat in the house all the time. 
but especially at night is when you're in a, in a dormant temperature. What it's said to do is wear a bed hat. Now, anybody know what a bed hat? You know what a bed hat is? So like things that has a little ball on the end, sort of like a. If I wore that, Marianne would take a picture <laughs> of that and send it to my friends. <laughs> my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right, tell me what bed socks are. Do they have a little thing on the end of them? They've got little bunnies on them. <laughs> All right, so another thing is to stay active in your house and do light exercise when it's in cold weather. So I guess you're going to have to stay up all night long and exercise. We already do that anyway because we, we don't sleep. Right? Yeah, I got restless legs on my phone. Yeah, yeah, so. That counts as your exercise. There's Becky while she was gone. Oh, my gosh. Ran the water over in the house. Oh, I forgot to get insurance. Um, the other thing is set a timer for your heating. Uh, that's another thing. People, a friend of mine said, well, why don't you get an electric blanket? We have such diminished feeling in our extremities, we couldn't tell when it's hot, we can burn ourselves. Yeah. You have some diminished feeling in your legs, in your skin, skin uh, sensation? Yeah. Okay. That's not a good thing. Um, one person also told me, well, just go ahead and put a blanket in the in the uh, dryer before you go to bed and turn it on and run it for a good bit and then get one of those thermal blankets and then just throw it on your bed, at least when you get in, you warm up. You know, like when they do the hospital operating room stuff. Uh, uh, finally, check your weather three to four times a day so you can dress appropriately, have extra clothes with you. Um, I do keep several clothes, and that's from being an athletic trainer in case I had a spill on my clothes or something. I always carry a couple extra clothes with you in the car if you travel. Well, we, we have multiple temperature gauges around the house. Uh-huh. And so they all get checked, and none of them are the same. So there's always a discussion on how warm or cold it really is. What's the normal temperature you run the, run, run in the house? What's That's the an normal? inside joke. Yeah. I gathered that from your lovely bride's uh, uh, giggling over here. So what are you doing to run, 72? I think so. I can't imagine 74 in a house. It's like the air wouldn't move. Now you go to my mother's house, it's 114. Okay, but she's 86, so she's allowed to do that. I, I sweat, constantly sweat. But uh, Final thing is flu shots. you get a flu shot? I do get one Monday. You get one Monday? Yeah. I don't get flu shots. Never had any flu. I want to push it. You get a flu shot? Yeah. Marianne, you've never had a flu shot? No. Once. Once? Many years. How'd you feel after a flu shot? Oh. Like you had the flu? No? And I think that's why they call it a flu shot. Give you a shot of it. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. I'm, I'm, I had a cousin that had the flu shot and spent 30-something days in the hospital. Yeah. And they had a venter. Mm. And... You know, um, I just don't, um, Becky keeps her at 73, Alex at 68. Um, I don't know how I feel about flu shot in, in my, you know, I've got enough going on, that's all I need. Wow, parking guy with a vent because of a flu shot. You can do give me a refund? It might. Okay. <laughs> um, would you like to give the, uh, tonight's audience any Parkinson's tips or hints? If they suspect somebody in their family um, has Parkinson's or something's a little bit different, what some of the outward signs are, or maybe even some of the hidden signs? Well, one of the things that we have had a lot of comments about is that people would like to see you do a Facebook page. And on that, we not only put your broadcasts or your interviews, but put other resources on there that have information that people like, would like to have. And um, one 
one of the things that we were looking at was like the tenants of living with Parkinson's, the stages of Parkinson's, um, motor motor skills and non-motor skills that are affected by Parkinson's, and that way when people have suspected, I sort of segued into this next thing that's all right for you. Go oh, yeah. Um, one of the things that we would like to do is put up some information if people suspect somebody in their family's got Parkinson's or, or maybe the doctors haven't looked at it and they want to have them look at it. This would be a resource that they can go to. And so many of the Parkinson's things that are out there, they've got just scads of information. And if you don't know what you're looking for, then it can get very confusing and very overwhelming. Yeah. And so what what we're looking at doing is putting my boss used to call it hit the high nails. And it's just to get people educated, people who, who may think they might have Parkinson's or haven't been able, like where the doctors haven't been able to diagnose them. They could take this information in and say, hey, have you looked at this? Right. Or family members say, hey, have, have your doctors looked at this? And I think the more basic education we can get out on Parkinson's would be helpful to everyone in the Parkinson's community and outside the Parkinson's community. Because as, as in your, your case where they first diagnosed you with dementia and they first diagnosed me with depression and, and our friend, they diagnosed him with back, with back problems. This would just be something you can say, hey, doc, have you taken, have you, look at this. I, I have these non-motor issues. Here's a list of the main ones. Check me out. I think also because there's some of the non-motor ones that we've talked about with our friends in our group that aren't even listed on on the you know the big list of the how they've expanded that out. Yeah. There's some very subtle things that I've been listening to that I think we could add to that page too. And I think it's a great idea that you talk about. So it's actually like a live Parkinson's source from Parkinson's people. Yeah, because we're the patients, and we know what we felt. Yeah. And so that gives a different perspective, I think. And um, then other resources that you come across. But the other thing that I think is really important is getting all of your interviews from the time you started. Yeah up to now and then moving forward with it yeah. because you've gone over a lot of things that I've gone back and, and weeded through and found out some things that I didn't know and there were some interesting programs you did. Well, thank you. You're kind. I tell you, it helps out a lot. Just, just us boxing on Wednesday nights, just talking between ourselves. It kind of makes the next seven days a little bit more positive. As a caregiver, Marianne, and has that helped y'all too? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up on your positive note tonight about our Facebook page. Um, I would say that that'll be up in a week. Okay. Because I'll get the kids at Limestone to help me out and the IT gurus and, um, See what my bro fraternity brother Don did to get a page up. But uh, Daryl and I and, and a couple of other folks will be the administrators of it. And it'll be a public forum, right? That's what we right. want to be a public forum. And um, uh, we do ask, though, that we don't put political issues on there whatsoever unless you find out that there's um, some um, something that the politicians are doing other than arguing. Uh, to help us with our Parkinson's research. Uh, it is a fact. It is one of the smaller research bundles of money 
uh, going out and not to say anything against the community that has HIV or AIDS, but they got a lot of money and, you know, everybody else after that, you know, cancer doesn't have a lot of money and ALS and, you know, uh, Alzheimer's and all those others. So uh, we'll just stay at it. Maybe we can get some folks uh, helping us out. Hopefully there's some folks for the North Carolina Parkinson's Disease Association. Would you please um, respond to our emails or, and I've left my number on several emails. My physician has called uh, a couple times and we just can't get anybody to call Shelby, North Carolina. And to help us with the materials, um, we have half a dozen folks and not including the caregivers, we probably have a dozen folks to include them. And we also have other folks that have other um, uh, illnesses and disorders that um, don't have support group either. So we're just kind of hanging tight on our own. Um, yes, Alex, I remember when you were, uh, was it, was in the Shelby Star, you they interviewed, did a great job. But uh, Daryl, you got any closing thoughts before we shut her down? No, I think I said all I can say. All right. Used up all your words for tonight. Yeah. Yeah, was... same here. I talk too much, so I'll just be quiet. Anyway, thanks a lot for uh, watching our show tonight. We appreciate it. Uh, Daryl, I appreciate your pitch hitting. I mean, you got a good swing strike. I mean, you did a great job tonight. You're always a, a, a fan favorite. And um, we're, we're praying for our buddy uh, that uh, wasn't with us last night. Um, that had a procedure done and, and hope he and his lovely bride are doing well. Uh, we think about you all day long and uh, hope to see you next week. So um, as I always say, God bless America. Um, thank you to law enforcement, EMS and fire for protecting us as we sleep at night and during the day. God bless all of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, coasties, and Marines that are on foreign battlefields standing up, standing up for those they don't even know. So, uh, Always remember, embrace the shake. All right, y'all take care. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.